In this video, we'll be proving a simple fact about negation in cock. We'll also look at the corresponding proof term. So what we want to prove is, for all x in prop, not, not, not x implies not x. So this says if the triple negation of x holds, then the negation of x holds. So what is this negation? This negation symbol is just notation for the object defined in cock as not. We can use the print command in cock to get information about this definition, such as how it's defined and what is its type. The definition of not in cock is lambda a in prop, a implies false. So that means if you apply not to a proposition, it's defined to be that proposition implies false. Now, how is false defined? We can also use the print command on false, and it will tell us that the definition is inductive false in prop, colon equals, and then there's nothing else. So this means that false is defined inductively in cock, but we don't give any way of proving false. So effectively, false is a proposition for which we have no proof. Now let's turn to the task of proving the goal. We'll start off by introducing x and a. So x is the proposition, and a is the assumption of the triple negation of x. Now note that the claim we need to prove is not x. And this not x is the same, up to the definition of negation, as x implies false. So this means that we're really trying to prove x implies false, and we can do another intros and introduce the assumption being, which is a proof of x. Now we're trying to prove false. Next, let's look at this assumption A, the assumption of the triple negation of x. It's the same as the double negation of x implies false. So this means we can apply A, and the result will be to reduce the claim we need to prove from false to the double negation of x. So now we need to prove the double negation of x. Well, this claim, the double negation of x, it's the same up to definition as not x implies false. So this means we can do another intros. So we do an intros C, and C is an assumed proof of not x, and we need to prove false. So this new assumption of not x is up to definition the same as x implies false. So we can apply C and reduce the claim to proving x. And now we're done because, in fact, we do have x as an assumption, the assumption b, so we can finish the proof with exact b. Now we've successfully completed the proof as a script. But let's look back at what we did and, in the process, construct the proof term. Now let's go back before the apply c. At this point, we were trying to prove false, and we had these three assumptions a, b, and c. Now it's clear that if we apply C to B, we have a proof of false because C is a proof of X implies false and B is a proof of X. So in fact, we could have finished the proof then by simply saying exact C, B. Now we also know that each of these intros corresponds to a lambda abstraction in the proof term. So we can go before this intro C. So before we introduced the assumption C, of not x. And we could finish the proof with an exact by giving the proof term lambda c, c b. Recall in cock we write fun for a lambda. Now let's keep working backwards. And recall at this point we no longer have the assumption c to work with. That's underneath this lambda abstraction. So before we did this apply a, we knew we wanted to have a proof term that started with the function a applied to some proof term in particular a proof of the double negation of x. In fact, the proof of the double negation of x is what we have as an exact proof term below now, this lambda c, c b. So we can finish the proof here using exact a applied to lambda c, c b. Now at this point, we almost have the full proof term. The only tactics that were used before an exact at this point are intros, and we know that intros correspond to lambda abstractions. So let's go back to the beginning of the proof and simply give the full proof term as lambda x a b, and then the body of the lambda is what we have as an exact below, 
It's A applied to lambda C, CB. And so we're done.